Welcome to another episode of Inside Out with Gia Boya, a podcast that is dedicated to exploring holistic self-care and personal growth from the inside out. I am your host, Gia Boya, and if you are tuned into this podcast on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification bell for whenever I release a new video. And if you are tuned into this podcast on Spotify or Apple, please do not forget to subscribe as well and like this podcast. So I've been exploring the idea of building a community for a while solely because it is something that resonates so deeply with me in this season of my life. And I have researched a little bit of a criteria in terms of some of the things that you need to keep in mind when you think about building your community. And the first thing has to be that the people that you decide to reveal yourself to, as in be vulnerable to, need to make you feel calm. And when I say calm, I'm not speaking in a sense of, you know, like, overall peace but to some degree yes peace um your nervous system is your biggest indicator in terms of who you feel safe around and who you don't feel safe around and i have been able to develop that relationship with myself and my nervous system to be able to suss out who do i feel safe around and who do i not feel safe around the second thing that i have been mindful of when it comes to selecting the people that i decide to be vulnerable towards is people that listen without judgment now this is difficult you know when people say vibes don't lie they mean vibes don't lie because you do feel when you are being judged and you're opening yourself up to somebody and they are judging you and sometimes it makes you close off so if you feel that there are people that you have revealed yourself to and they make you feel judged maybe they shouldn't be part of your inner circle i'm just saying Another green flag to spot in the people who you want to be part of your circle and your people that you can be vulnerable to is the fact that they support your needs. So we all have needs in relationships and I personally struggled with this. Uh, I, I struggled to support people sometimes when they told me they needed certain things from me. And mm, does that mean that I need to be disqualified? Not necessarily, but I think you can teach people to respond to the needs that you have. However, it is also your individual responsibility to make sure that you identify your needs in a relationship and you communicate those needs in a relationship, whatever form of relationship, whether it is a friendship, a relationship with your mom or your dad or a relationship with your partner. It is important to be able to identify your personal needs so that you can be open and honest about what it is that you need. And we also need to keep in mind that these kind of people are also supportive. They are supportive of the endeavors that you engage in. They are supportive of whatever dream that you have. That is a very important one for me. And linking back to the previous video where I was talking about vulnerability and being honest when you need help, People cannot be there for you and cannot support you if you are not honest with them, if you do not give them the space to be supportive towards you. So you cannot rule out people and decide that people are not there for you when you are not allowing them to. And this is something to keep in mind when you are thinking about the green flags in your relationships. A big one that I have learned myself, people in my life will tell you one thing about me. I am terrible at pretending I'm the worst <laughs> at trying to be something that I'm not. And that is why I try to do everything and live my life with so much authenticity. And if you are surrounded by people who you feel that you cannot be yourself around and you call those people your close friends, maybe it is time to reevaluate your circle because I genuinely believe that the people that are meant to be a part of your life will accept you for the person that you are. You won't have to put on a facade or a face or be a, a certain part of yourself where they cannot accept you holistically. And this is something that I've had to learn as well, where I've had to know which sides of me are safe with certain people. There are people in my very close knit circle who I can be fully myself around. And I did say that your close circle does not have to be 
10 people. It can literally be three people. For me, it's my mom, my best friend, and that's my close friends. <laughs> my close friends or my close knit of people. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a thing where you reveal yourself all the time, but to the people that you feel are the closest in your circle, you should be able to be yourself 100%. And another thing is they make you laugh. They have this, not the same sense of humor, but a similar sense of humor that you do have. You feel joy when you are around them. And it's not the same as them being responsible for your happiness. It's them contributing to your happiness. It's them contributing to your overall well-being. It's them contributing to how you feel when you are around them. If it is a positive kind of feeling, then of course, those are the people that you need to be keeping close in your life. And of course, if you have some other criteria that you use to suss out who is important in your life and who should form part of your close circle, please do not hesitate to leave your comment in the comment section below in terms of what else you think are green flags in the relationships that we build with people. I hope this episode has been helpful to you in terms of deciding the criteria or the criterion that you use to build close-knit circles of, I wouldn't say friendships because it can consist of different people in your life, but to build a close-knit of a support system. And thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.